Hello everyone, this is Mark Van de Wettering of the BrainWagon blog. This is my final project video for the Arduino and Gameduino satellite tracker that I've been working on, which I've codenamed Angst for Arduino and Gameduino satellite tracker. It uses the combination of an Arduino, um, just a common one. Uh, I use a, whatever the one that starts with D is that has the unpronounceable name. You could use a Nuno if you like. It's got a Gameduino piggybacked onto it. And I've prototyped the rest just on an auxiliary breadboard that you see next to it. There's three peripherals mounted on that board. Uh, the DS1307 real-time chip that uh, I got on a little board from SparkFun. It's a little battery backed up real-time clock. Just to the left of the LED, you can see an Atmel AT24C 1024, that's a little serial EEPROM chip that contains 128K of memory. And then the sole bit of user interface that I have is a rotary encoder that also has a push button switch. The code uh, fits uh, in about 30, about 27K out of the 30K available on this Arduino. I could do a little bit more squeezing to get a little extra free space, but so far that's all it does. And what it does is it reads a bunch of orbital elements that I've programmed into the EEPROM and displays the real-time clock and uh, a satellite display. So it's a little bit hard to see from this angle, but if on the very right there you can see one dot is a little bit orange colored or yellow. It actually shows up much better in real life just uh, to the northwest of Australia and that dot is the current location of the satellite and the satellite's position is plotted every three minutes throughout its entire orbit. Um, if you want to you can switch to different satellites. This is AO27, another fairly popular amateur radio satellite. FO29, you can see this got a little more higher orbit and is just leaving the footprint of, of uh, my location which is marked with a star and the ISS which has a much lower inclination orbit so it doesn't go out over the poles and you can see that hmm, in a few hours I'll have a pretty good good uh, pass on that this is Saudi Sat SO50 Echo AO51 VO52 the South American satellite Sambadilistad anyway so there's a whole bunch of the Chinese satellite and this is the uh, the uh, uh, Arasat 1, or as it's said in the file, radio scaf B. Um, so all of these are uh, predict, all the predictions are being done on the Arduino using floating point arithmetic. It's amazing that it can actually do that, given that it's just a little 8 bit processor. And uh, it's displayed uh, in real time. The real time clock is, uh, is uh, you don't have to reset it every time because it's battery backed up you can just power the whole unit off and it's dead and you can turn it back on and it will come right back up into the mode that you want the accuracy of the real-time clock is actually one of the bugaboos of this system so far um, it'll drift by a couple of minutes per week which really isn't good enough um, you really need to kind of have something running to uh, update the clock to keep it in sync with the actual time a little more accurately. I've thought about using a GPS for that purpose, but I haven't gotten around to tinkering with that. And it seemed beyond the, the scope of this simple project. One other feature that I've neglected to mention was that this uh, knob also has a push button feature. And if you push the button, it will predict the next satellite pass. So acquisition of signal occurs and it shows the real the time that it occurs. The 101 is the azimuth at which it comes up. Then the um, zenith, Z-E-N, is the zenith. So it'll be 15 degrees above the horizon at 48 degrees azimuth. And then it will uh, lose signal at 358, which is almost dead due north. So you can use this to actually predict passes as well. Um, Let's see, any other good features? No, I think this is about it. Oh, the best feature of all is, um, while the exact uh, um, hardware that I'm using is a little bit particular, it's not particularly hard to, to reproduce, 
Uh, even if you don't have a circuit board or anything, there's just a, a few minimum of wires to wire this up. So I'm going to make the complete design and all of the code available uh, for download. I'm going to use a BSD license, which hopefully means that you guys will get the maximum use out of it. Uh, John at Hackers Bench has already suggested that he wants to use the code to actually build an antenna tracking system, which I think would be cool. So maybe we'll see some future projects based around this. Um, the code will be available on GitHub. I'm currently working on that. Um, give me a day or two, and I expect to have uh, links to that up on the page from my blog. So this has been a fun project. I'm actually off to work on something else. I'm not going to tinker with this a whole lot for the near future. If you do have any questions about it, though, don't hesitate to ask. Just go ahead and send me email at brainwagon at gmail.com, or I'm also available on Twitter as user brainwagon. Hope this has been fun. I'll uh, talk to you again with my next project sometime in the near future. Have a good day. My original intention was to show you what this looked like hooked up to my big screen TV. Sadly, the video mode that uh, my big screen TV seems to put out doesn't seem to be quite compatible with the Game Duino. So you might have this problem if you're thinking of using the Game Duino. Uh, you might have difficulty with the exact video format that it puts out. Just a caveat.